I read all of your comments and wow, you all had some amazing feedback to give. So today, I'm gonna to take your feedback and implement it into my game. So a couple weeks ago, I published this video about how we have been working on our project for 10 months. We also showed some of the gameplay, which, as a lot of you pointed out, needed some work, especially when it came to the visual design. I wanted to give a quick shout out to all those who commented about one of the biggest issues we are running into so far, and that is contrast. Basically contrast is the difference between any two elements. Our brains are really good at spotting differences in things, which also makes things look weird to us when there is very little difference. For example, the player's costume against the brown dirt makes him almost blend in with the environment. I even had to circle the character in my previous video's thumbnail so you could see him. That should have been my first red flag. Now, we can improve this in our game by fixing a few major things. Number one, the texturing is too busy. As an experiment, I decided to add textures to everything to make the world feel more detailed. The issue with this is in a pixel art game, it can become difficult to manage depth with lots of extra noise. But I realized for this project, this is not really the style we're going for. So let's remove that. Second, color palette. The color palette is extremely important to the game and is clearly something that is lacking. I've been experimenting with different costume colors to help the player stand out a lot more. I settled on more yellow and orange colors, but this could definitely change. When we first started the project, I was using a temporary color palette with very vibrant colors, but I was feeling like it was a little bit too much. In the last video, after adding textures, I also ended up making the colors feel a little too bland. I realized I needed to balance this, so I made the colors more vibrant again, but adjusted them a little bit more. I'm liking how these colors are looking together a lot more now. Here's the comparison between the three. Quick side note, if you're enjoying this video, liking and subscribing goes a really long way in helping us make this project a reality. Third, lack of depth. There are a few things that cause the visuals to look flat, but to understand the issues, I need to explain a little about cameras. In Unity, there are two different types of cameras you can use. The first and main camera style that most people are familiar with is the perspective camera. Perspective cameras automatically give a sense of depth. This is used in majority of 3D games, including some 3D pixel art games like Octopath Traveler. This style looks amazing and can add more detail while also retaining a decent pixel art feel. If we tried to use a perspective camera for our game, you can see that we have more depth between the character and the environment, but a huge problem is created. That problem is pixel creep. Pixel creep is the effect of pixels changing size on the screen as the camera moves, causing the pixels to look like they are, you guessed it, creeping. Now don't get me wrong, there are some amazing games out there that use pixel creep as the style for their game. Take the game A Short Hike, for example. In the case of our game, we want it to look as closely like a 2D game as possible, which means we are shooting to er eradicate any and all pixel creep we can. This brings us to the second camera style, the orthographic camera. The reason we are using an orthographic camera is because it is a fixed depth camera. This means that no longer do we have to worry about that pesky perspective causing creeping pixels. Here's the difference between perspective and orthographic. Since we are losing our depth with an orthographic camera, we need to use other methods to add that depth back in. We already talked about color, which is a huge help in this area as well, but there's one thing that we haven't talked about yet which makes a huge difference, and that's lighting. Previously, we were still using real-time shadows, which can look pretty cool, but there are some major issues. Mainly, shadows can be really expensive to process, and second, since they are being generated real-time, they cannot lock to our pixel grid, which causes the dreaded pixel creep. We don't want that. So how do we fix this? Simple, turn off all the shadows and make our own. I know this may sound crazy, but it actually solves both of these issues rather easily. By turning off the shadows, we no longer have to worry about it slowing down the game. And with custom shadows, we can control exactly how they look. And this includes our player's shadow. If we look at how shadows are typically used in 2D games, you can see a little circle shadow underneath the player. By adding a custom shadow to our player, it already looks a lot more like a 2D game and immediately gives our player a lot more depth. Mission accomplished. We can then drop some more shadows, add some lighting effects, and throw a few particles into the scene, and this is already looking a lot better. But what do you think? Now for some honorable mentions. 
We had a great suggestion centered around how the camera follows the player very rigidly. This has been something I've wanted to fix for a while, so this gave me a nice dose of motivation. It was a pretty simple fix. Previously, the camera was fixed directly on the player. All I did was give the camera a slight smoothing effect, which I think looks pretty good. This also fixed another major issue of going up and down stairs. This is what it looks like with the previous camera. And this is what it looks like with the updated camera. Can you tell the difference? We also had this great comment, which mentioned possibly adding some type of visual cue to our collectible items to make it easier to know which ones can be picked up and which ones can't. All I did for this one was add an animation state that adds a white outline to the object. Now when you hover over a collectible item, it will highlight. We also had this great comment as well, mentioning our dash sound effect could get kind of annoying after playing for long periods of time. Currently, the dash sound effect is a combination of wind sound effects and a humming sound. I realized that the humming sound was probably a bit too loud, so I turned that down quite a bit. And then I also turned down the overall volume of the dash, since it really doesn't need to be that loud. Here's the comparison. I unfortunately couldn't get to all the amazing comments in this one video, so I'm going to have to leave those for a future video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.